Full House is a family television series that started in 1987 and became a favorite for many. It's about a widowed father who enlists his best friend and brother-in-law to help raise his three daughters. It's filled with moments that will make you laugh, shake your head in disbelief, and even tug at your heartstrings. Now, let's talk about the actors. Many talented individuals were part of this show, but Bob Saget, who played the loving father Danny Tanner, stood out for his humor and warmth. As for when I first watched Full House, well, I don't watch TV shows, but I know it first aired on September 22, 1987, and quickly became a part of many viewers' lives. What about you? Do you remember the first time Full House made you laugh or moved you in some way? Your stories and memories are important, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching because there are many more funny, shocking, and sad facts to share about this beloved series. So, stay tuned, and let's take this trip down memory lane together. Imagine a house filled with laughter, lessons, and love. That's the essence of Full House, a show that started in 1987 and quickly became a favorite for many. It's about a widowed father who enlists his brother-in-law and best friend to help raise his three daughters. Set in San Francisco, the show captures the adventures of this unique family as they navigate life's ups and downs together. Full House stands out for its portrayal of family values and the strong bonds that can form in unconventional family setups. It was a hit during its time and continues to be loved by new generations, showing that family and love are timeless themes that everyone can relate to. Dave Coulier, before his time on the beloved family sitcom, coined his catchphrase, come on now, cut it out, on a different show, Out of Control, which aired on Nickelodeon. This phrase, along with its unique hand gestures, became a signature part of his character on the sitcom. Meanwhile, the character Danny Tanner, known for his meticulous cleaning habits, did not start off that way. It wasn't until the second season that this trait was emphasized, despite the first season portraying him as relatively indifferent to cleanliness, particularly in the episode titled The Return of Grandma. Additionally, the character DJ had a specific phone number assigned to her, which was 5558-7022, a detail that added a touch of realism to her role in the show. The loss of Bob Saget marked a significant change for the cast, leaving John Stamos and Dave Coulier as the remaining original adult actors. Dave Coulier's family background includes his parents Dave and Arlen, with his mother's passing acknowledged in the sequel series. His grandparents were Theodore and Miriam Coulier. During the show's original run, Bob Saget took on the role of host for America's Funniest Home Videos, and Dave Coulier followed a similar path, hosting the related show America's Funniest People. In the search for the perfect fit for the character of Michelle, casting directors found their match in Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, who distinguished themselves by being the only infants who remained tear-free during auditions. The visual representation of San Francisco, which served as the backdrop for the beloved family sitcom, was captured entirely within a single day's shoot. Spanning across both the original series and its sequel, Jody Sweeten stands out as the sole actor to have graced every episode, a testament to her character's central role in the story. Over the course of its early seasons, the show depicted a shift in the main character's choice of car, moving from a classic 1961-88 Oldsmobile to more conventional family vehicles like a Ford Taurus or a minivan. This change was never addressed within the show's narrative, despite the Oldsmobile still being visible in the opening credits. By 2016, this series joined the ranks of a select few TGIF sitcoms, alongside Boy Meets World, Dinosaurs, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, to have the complete series available on DVD. Additionally, the character's notable trait of being overly concerned with cleanliness was last seen in the episode titled The Problem with Danny. These details reflect subtle yet significant aspects of the show's evolution and its legacy in home entertainment. Before his days on television, Jason Marston's childhood included time at Laguna Road Elementary School located in Fullerton, California. In an interesting wardrobe choice, the mannequin in Joey's room was seen wearing the same shirt as Joey throughout the first season. Off-screen, Candace Cameron Beer's life took a romantic turn when she met Valerie Beer at a hockey game an event attended by the entire cast. This meeting sparked an immediate connection, leading to their marriage when she was 20 years old. The couple has since built a family with three children and remains together. In the early days of the show, Bob Saget, who played a pivotal role, was close to departing due to creative differences over the script and narrative direction. 
During this period, the set also became the meeting ground for Kirk Cameron and Chelsea Noble, who both guest starred in the same season and later married. Notably, Saget's character was given the distinction of delivering both the opening and closing lines of the entire series, bookending the show's long and successful run. At a young age, John Stamos became part of the cast and saw the conclusion of the show in his late 20s. Candace Cameron Bure, a fan of his previous work, felt quite anxious about working with him initially. The character Jesse, known for his motorcycle, also owned a notable red Mustang from 1965, which was later sold at an auction for a significant sum and featured Stamos's signature. The characters DJ, Stephanie, and Michelle shared a passion for horses and each engaged in different sports throughout the show, reflecting a theme of athletic involvement that extended to other characters like Joey, Danny, and Jesse, who also had their moments in various sports. The show subtly nods to the personal backgrounds of its cast, blending fiction with reality. For instance, Joey's wardrobe includes a nod to the Detroit Tigers, reflecting actor Dave Coulier's own sports allegiances despite his character's San Francisco roots. This blend of actor and character extends beyond the screen, as Coulier's real-life connections led to a marriage between castmate Candace Cameron Bure and hockey player Valerie Bure. Coulier's love for his hometown teams is further showcased through his character's attire, featuring Detroit Red Wings jerseys, bringing a touch of his personal fandom to the beloved family sitcom. In the midst of its eight-year run, the show saw a unique casting change when Blake and Dylan Shumi Wilhout stepped in to portray Nikki and Alex starting from the sixth season. Adding to the behind-the-scenes trivia, Scott Weinger, despite being left-handed, showcased his ambidexterity by swinging a golf club and baseball bat with his right hand. Additionally, fans missed out on a festive farewell as the planned final Christmas episode. Our very last Christmas show was ultimately shelved and did not make it to production. Despite its initial struggle with ratings, the show managed to secure its place on television beyond the first season. The character Michelle Tanner, portrayed by twins, was shown to be ambidextrous, using both hands equally for tasks like writing and eating reflecting the real-life handedness of the actresses. Additionally, the character Joey Gladstone, known for his comedic talent, often mimicked the cartoon character Popeye, showcasing his voice acting skills in several episodes. In the midst of laughter and family life, the show cleverly inserted nods to popular culture, including two references to the infamous Freddy Krueger. The first instance was a humorous school paper edit by Kimmy, while the second was a light-hearted banter between Joey and Danny. These nods were made more interesting by the fact that cast members Walter and Aaron had roles in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Despite the sequence of filming, the producers made a creative decision to air Michelle Rides Again as the final episode for its fitting storyline, even though All Stood Up was the last to be shot. Lori Loughlin, initially set for a brief stint, saw her character's popularity soar, leading to her becoming a mainstay from the third season. Her presence became so integral that she was featured in every episode thereafter. Similarly, Andrea Barber's character gained prominence, becoming a regular fixture from the sixth season. These elements contributed to the show's dynamic and enduring appeal.